Yeah, so. Yeah, thanks, uh, welcome uh, to this discussion with uh, Anna Kat and Ms. Gary uh, during our uh, exhibition, Text Violence. And I want to introduce you our fantastic uh, guests. Um, Chiara Vachin Casas, the international curator, and she gave us during the talk uh, a kind of historical concept to uh, performing art. Uh, on my right, on your right side, is Marek Klaassen, founder of uh, ArtFactsNet, and uh, he uh, held some words uh, during the discussion about um, performing art in the art market. Um, and um, the artist, Anna Katz, um, will at the beginning explain us a bit about the works here in the installation. And uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Um, yes, yeah, so this is uh, Back to Violence. Is, um, what you see in the exhibition are excerpts of a developing body of work um, that pertains to uh, psychological, social, and physical violence, or physical violence, um, and very importantly, um, its aftermath. And I'm particularly interested in yeah, in psychological violence because it's actually the most difficult to to define and to distinguish where the borders are actually and where it starts and where where, where it ends. Um, and so for this reason, it's also the most difficult to defend. Um, and so yeah, if you guys maybe have the exhibition uh, text, there's um, a, a quote from Freud. And it's uh, really about this. Oh, so the <laughs> um, um, he writes about, which is in English, I think, is repetitive compulsion or repetitive compulsion, um, which is uh, when repetition replaces memory, which is actually the subtitle of the exhibition title. Um, and this is really a way that uh, I understand my work uh, to be actually um, an interesting way of uh, seeing the works of this show is um, looking at, okay, in terms of um, violence, uh, instances of violence and its consequences um, uh, in terms of memory and then how it can happen that when memory is erased or absent, you know, for a variety of reasons, maybe disassociation, maybe because um, it was experienced at a time when one is too young to remember, or maybe because it's a sort of inherited post-memory um, that comes from a different generation or from other, um, but how a person can um, reproduce the memory in, you know, as an action rather than a conscious memory. Um, and so with this, actually is where the title of the exhibition comes from. You know, the, the F is in the brackets um, because uh, an act of violence can be understood as a fact of violence if, as far as one believes in facts. Um, because according to Freud in this theory, we in society often yield to this compulsion to repeat uh, rather than the compulsion to remember, or I would say actually the capacity to, to remember. Um, and so, yes, this is very much what this body of work is based on. This, that, that, you know, where, where memory is absent, um, its consequences in the form of repetition um, are, are present. And so, briefly, I will just say a few words about the works that are in the show. Um, Running on Empty is the film that was being screened in this room that we had to sadly turn off because of space and, you know, to have the talk. But this, uh, this work, um, it took place in Serbia, it's a site-specific work, and um, I run the historic route of the gas dam, which was a gas chamber that was uh, used inside of a van during the Holocaust for a short period in 1941. 
for the purpose of extermination in the in transit, and at the end uh, there was a mass grave. You know, so this was very unusual actually in the Holocaust to have um, to have you know usually transport was a means to an end, and in this case the transport itself, uh, this landscape itself, is the place of the extermination. And so the way that I viewed this was really this, um, sorry, this extended geographical space, which is a landscape of trauma. And the topic of how to deal with this memory is, yeah, it's a very difficult one to answer, and one that I don't also have, I don't have an answer. Why do you run? So I run it. Where, where, where yes. Um, I run it without any training. Uh, it's meant to be really a shock to the body, and. Um, I wanted uh, the, the audio of the breath was very important, especially as it deals with this history of suffocation. And so I have two microphones recording the breath, I have another microphone recording the muscles. Um, and I worked with a film crew and ran yeah, 15 kilometers, uh, also through the Autobahn and into the hills, like in the villages outside of the city. Um, and. Uh, this was the work itself in public space, but in post-production, it became a different work. You know, I worked with a video editor in Berlin. We worked with these three images that are coming in and out um, of, the, of, of being visible at times that are unpredictable. Um, and also the sound designer, who's here also tonight, it's in this town. And um, we worked with all of this audio that comes actually from my own body, even though it sounds as though it sounds like you know, many things, I don't know, extraterrestrial or um, mechanical or many things, but it's all coming actually from my own body and it's developed in a way that is very conceptual also because it is um, mirroring the way that uh, traumatic memory functions. Um, and so the video work that's produced from this is really, um, it's, a, it's like a, another work of its own. Um, and then uh, this one over here, Borders and Lines, this video is still on you. Um, it was around uh, this time that I worked quite a lot in the Balkans, uh, very interested in the topic of, of um, er instances of erased history. Mm, looking at erased, also collective memory, and uh, working with very heavy uh, histories of violence and conflict, and also in the region of former Yugoslavia, and finding myself in the midst of sort of um, quite a present, current ethnic conflicts as well, and uh, surrounded by these landscapes of trauma. And at some point, I really started to feel as though my own body was a reflection of these landscapes of trauma that it was itself one. <laughs> um, and I had the, the drive to make this work, um, to, to, to cut a barcode into the chest uh, with a razor blade, to treat the body as a canvas, to make the body into a landscape of trauma that is reflecting the geographical and historical ones that are surrounding, that were surrounding me. And uh, I later came to this kind of understanding, actually quite a few years later, about lines, you know, analyzing, okay, what, what is this attraction um, that I have to lines aesthetically um, with this barcode and this, yeah, in other ways as well. And I realized at some point that uh, actually trauma is all about lines because uh, lines are borders and trauma occurs when borders are crossed. And so it was a very strong intuitive decision that I, need, I wanted to carve a barcode into my chest, but I didn't understand why until years later that I understood that this turning the body into a landscape of trauma to do so with lines of blood is actually very, um, yeah, there's really um, intellectually a connection that can be made there. Um, Am I talking too much? Or is no. <laughs> I, don't I, like, Super. I mean, I don't want to go too long. No, just, just the short is bad, you know. Okay. Everything okay. is also awesome the text, but I think um, the truth is one to hear from you also. Yes, yes. Just one more thing about this one. There's the, the postcard that's underneath. 
is the only time, because it's a photograph, and it's the only time when you see the full chest. Thank you. Uh, when you see the full chest, because this video is shot in a way that's very fragmented. Um, and, and on the back of it, there is barcode, uh, because this is a limited edition postcard that we have. Uh, so it has the stamp of the gallery. And it looks as though the stamp is the barcode of the gallery, but it's not. It's actually the barcode that's carved into my chest. And so I like this little yeah, that detail. Yeah, I don't really use the stamp uh, very often. Yes, I really have a connection to the stamp. <laughs> Love okay, it. My next gift. Thank you. Um, yeah. And then continuing over here, um, this work is uh, yeah, connected, it's a documentation of the performance here on the iPad. Now it is blocking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
And so, um, yeah, the objects of the pillows, they're very, actually pillows are kind of appearing everywhere in notes that I'm doing, I think, but in many different forms. But, um, I mean, you know, they're objects of home and they're symbols of comfort and they're symbols of safety and comfort. And then the iron is, um, I don't know, many people sort of associate it with something domestic or with femininity, which I don't at all. Uh, I associate it more with the, I think the, the danger of the iron and the heat and the, the branding and the burning um, and also the shape that it leaves uh, when it burns something has a violence to it. I think uh, it's like a weapon actually. Yeah. And, and then you work on every single um, pillow for 20 minutes? Kind of. Yeah, so with the first one, uh, first they're on the wall and I take them off with the first one. Uh, I put um, the iron there and put the timer for 15 minutes. And in this one, I'm very uh, detached and removed and lie down and put the legs up the wall. The legs are sort of moving a bit, but also sort of um, often in this position of the V, which is where this statement about V is for victory, where it comes from. And this is, uh, to me, a very morbid image of, yeah that position referring to victory. Um, so the burning there is without the involvement directly of my body. And then uh, with this one, um, I come on top of the pillow and sit with the legs open in a V, and the iron comes here uh, facing my body. This one is also uh, a reference to sexual violence. And here again, the timer is put for 15 minutes. And then it's just a matter of waiting. You know, it's this waiting and staying and being in the painful, uncomfortable situation, which I have put myself in, but well, it's all about repetition. So. Um, and with the last one, then I lie down and position the, the iron here, and we share the pillow together. And for me, this one is very much about the idea of and the clock tells you to stop. Yeah, the, the clock is always set for 15 minutes, and then there's always the, the ticking, you know, creating the sort of um, uncomfortable atmosphere. And in the last one, it's really very much about this um, line with the partner, but in, when I say partner, I mean sort of like the, the demon inside, you know, it's sort of, sort of embracing of the demon inside, of which I live or leave it or whatever it is, recognizing partnership in that. And I think that in this last, um, in what happened here with this last pillow and the iron, there was a lot of intimacy also. Um, and so that is um, the work. It remains with this installation. And yeah, I think that's yeah. enough. No? Yeah, you have also the chance after <laughs> ask the uh, yeah. questions. And um, Jan, maybe you? Uh, I, when, I, when I met Elena, I saw a few performances of her, and we met several times, and we spoke about her work. And what, what I immediately, I thought immediately about three points, which to me are, are very, very close to the, to the history of body art and performing art. The first point is the her urgency, urgency to uh, uh, initiate the soul, to initiate uh, a different point of view, and uh, to suggest somehow of a, a cathartic moment in which, um, which is starting when she thinks about uh, a work and uh, she sees it as a static image and then she proceeds on giving the uh, shape and form to her work and to her performances. And this is something that reminds me of uh, the Julian Beck and Judith Polina in the Living Theatre and their theatrical acts repeated, uh, tailored and thought and conceived to go against the social uh, rules or the social thinking, a thinking that we accept as, as it is. The second point that really uh, impressed me is the use that Elana does of her body, that of course uh, immediately recalls to the body art, to artists such as Gina Pane or Vito Conci, and the way she's using her body 
for example, in the work Lines and Borders, the way she's approaching the performing art in a different way from the past in a different way from the beginning of the 60s and then the 70s in which uh, body art really has been accepted somehow um, in, the art or in the art world, in, uh, in, the, in the perception of these artistic uh, tendencies. And it's very peculiar how she never, never takes over her performance, never ever she takes over her concept is like the concept and the image and uh, her work is developing through her pivotal body, a body that she uses as a map to, to, to witness and to be the, 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 the tool through which you're acting, you're performing uh, act. But you are not there uh, to act, you are not there to take over your work, you are just using the body and that recalls anthropological meanings, sociological meanings, but in a different way. Whereas in the past, in the 70s, the performing the action and the body art was um, was, was the mirror of a change in times in which the visual, the 2D perspective perception of a work that was on the wall uh, was still there as it is now, but it was a, a rebellion and there were a lot of artists that they were anti-market and they were refusing their performative art to be functional to any kind of production of actual work. Whereas in the case of Elana, she, um, she figure out, it's like that is coming, the media you will then use for, to, to represent your performance, to give to give birth to it and then to leave it, to leave it out. And it's something that is, is not common. Back, back in the years, they were documenting the performance through photos, through videos, through sketches, even prints. And, uh, but then that was a documentation. There were documents. And whereas in the work of Elana, this ephemeral moment, this, uh, this, this moment in time, this moment of work and of action is being done, it, it takes shape, it takes body through video, for example, or through another body of work. Speaking of this work, for example, that's another example of how the work of Elana is, is various and how she never, uh, she's very free in the way in which she presents her work. So she doesn't stick to a media, but she lets the performance ask what is needed to be then yeah. in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So also in this case, she started from the concept about which she spoke before, she uses actually everyday material, common material. And through this material, she acts on her body. As she acts on her higher body in the video world, cutting her skin on herself the, uh, with, the, with the razor, but here she acts on her body adding something on her body and changing the perception, the shape, the way you are occupying the space. So in this work, actually, this work uh, uh, speaks about the absence of her and speaks at the same time about the meaning of the performance <coughs> and speaks uh, at the same time is like um, a forgotten armor. She built on herself, changing her body, something with poor material, which then she left there. And that, uh, that, that, is, that is a full body of work. And uh, it's a full body of works that holds within a moment in time that will never be repeated because you never repeat a performance. But still, it's completely precious. And what impresses me is also the use of this kind of material, which is a violent material, because these are mirrors. And besides the anthropological and social meaning of a mirror, in which there is the, the, the vanity, there is the reflection, there is some kind of request for an information or a feedback, looking at yourself in the mirror, 
The mirror is also, is also glass, is also cutting you, is also, and the wood, especially the wood like this, Pia Eki, is, is very violent as well as the metal, and you are putting it on your body with the tape, bringing your body, forcing your body to be inside the structure, and then, and then you are, you are leaving it out, but while in between, in the process, everything is, is mirrored. And, and this reminds me, uh, brings me also to this, uh, this other body of work on, in which you are also using everyday material. And uh, another important question that I did to Elana when we met was, do you think that what comes out of your performance are relics or are outcomes? Because another thing, and a third thing I thought uh, when we spoke and when I saw her work was um, about the meanings of actionism. So Hermann Nietzsche, Arnold Breiner, Schwarzkogler, and their way, their research, their urgency, such as your urgency to twist the content, to, to deliver an idea, to initiate and, and a, a disturbing act, something that would not make the audience comfortable. And it's very wide the, the, the discussion about Vinis uh, Machinismus, but it was important to me to understand for her, after the disruptive and strong act of performing, what was coming out was a relic, as after a turmoil, after as when a ship crashed on the rocks, or was rather an outcome. And she told me that for her is an outcome. And I truly believe that, I, I can feel that, because the, the power of the act and the disruptive act is, is still there. But then the outcome, they are, they are different. And, uh, and here is also the change compared to the Venus Lakshmi They are different, they are different media, they, are different. they can be objects, they can be videos, they can be a collection of pieces. And also here, her, she uses her body in a different way. The body here is uh, acting upon an object, but always in reference with an object. What we spoke about was that in the first, like, ironing or burning the first pillow, she was above the pillow, not necessarily touching the pillow, but acting on the object. And then, on the second pillow, she was uh, on the pillow, leaving us the marks of, uh, of her legs. And that's also another reference to the, to the action of the, 70th, of the 60s and the 70s, in which the performer was, was literally doing something, ruining or acting on something. So she was, again, above the pillow, but in this case, sitting on it. And here, in the last pillow, is hair on the side of the pillow, just burning the pillow, but kind of hugging the pillow. So that can, be, that can be actually, in my eyes, an evolution of her work, but also on her different approach to the work. And, uh, and I think, yeah, overall, these works are, are very are mirroring a lot the work of Anana and are mirroring also her quest for a new signifier and a, and a media to deliver her, um, her concept and her thinking. And also what you said about the postcard is very interesting because there is really a transposition of, of your thinking, of your idea from the video to the postcard, and there is a visual shift. Where in, when in the video there is a fragmented part of your body that is being seen, then only in the postcard one can see the whole body. So that's a translation, a, a, a development of, of the work. Yeah. And there is another matricity, another graspability of the work. And, uh, and yeah, I think it's. It's very important to understand that nowadays the, 
what it comes from a performative act, what is being produced by a performer, is not anymore documentation that becomes artwork, is not anymore documentation that becomes precious and valuable because historicized, because we are living in the now. So it can be video, can be a body of work, but what needs to be underlined and transmitted that is the importance of of the thinking. The, the, the ephemeral is, is still there because the act is happened. But when somebody holds, watches a video or holds a body of pieces, these are actually a precious uh, um, It happens in a very unique way. Exactly. In the, they are a precious way in which somebody can hold and understand what has happened once and never anymore, and they speak about her absence, but also about her work, and they are cohesive, as you as you told me, you know, like uh, you are feeling, you, you know that it's good to for these pieces to be presented together with yeah. the documentation. But yeah, and I want them to continue to have one of like the, to be exhibited also. Yes, it's, it's a big difference. Yeah. So, um, it's and we can also. Um, Switch also to this. Um, yeah, it's a unique thing of uh, Alana's works, and um, which is um, completely different, maybe, to this multimedia world we are living now in. So, um, because to see a video like like uh, this, for example, also an actor can do with uh, red color on or with ketchup, uh, and maybe looks very similar to this work, but uh, her work is very, um, that's why he, uh, she also makes the performance just one time. And um, then we can also, I think, at this moment switch also to a very important question. Um, um, how it works, um, for example, in art market. Sometimes when we um, make now a very intellectual uh, talk, mm -hmm. uh, this question could be irritating sometimes, or it could be uncomfortable, you know? But uh, I think it's a very important question to ask um, how um, performance art can exist um, in, the, yeah, in the contemporary uh, um, world, like a, also commercial um, piece of art because it's not so easy to to, to, to find the definition. Uh, I use your words. Uh, we talked yesterday about this. I, I, I like this uh, cliche: um, um, male, white, American, and painter. And uh, there are some um, some points, and then it works um, for 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 cell works, for for living from works. Uh, but it's just a cliché, it's, it's a negative cliché on the end, because, um, um, yeah, it's, 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 it is like it is, and, and, and I think um, it's important, don't go back to this schema, um, yeah, like artists, you have to be male, you have to be a good painter, of course good, because you have to come a chance, and American, and, and I think um, Mara can, can continue in, in yeah, it's a little bit uh, strange uh, now yeah, to but speak I, about I think it's very it's very yeah. comfortable, yeah. but it's very important yeah. also for all artists. And it's, it's important we had yesterday a kind of preparation for the Zalti introduction of the work and your wonderful historical introduction. And uh, so the market size of something is uh, it's in a way brutal, like these uh, uh, irons, right? Yeah. It's, so I really felt uh, in the moment should I have now a, a monologue about uh, market and how does this work? Uh, when you hear you know the um, spirit of Ilana and the historic context of it and uh, how she struggles and that she cuts herself and she's not an actor who just you know cuts into fake uh, skin, and make it again, fake again. blood, yeah. yeah, and copy it again and again. Spoke about uh, this as well, about charging up the work. And uh, I would, 
be curious how many of you are actually knowing Alana's work and have been here to the performance or before. Is this, can you, do you know her? How many do you know her? And the rest you don't know her work? You have nothing? This is interesting. Uh, because, you know, when I, when I came here uh, to this show the first time, I was a little bit late to the performance and I couldn't enter. And, uh, I mean, I could have entered, but I had a dog with me, it was a little bit difficult. But it's, you know, I was seeing her laying there in the corner with this iron and, you know, suffering with this steam and stuff. And uh, I was just thinking, wow, this is here, everybody can walk in, you know, it's free of charge. It's a, it's a performance uh, that is not repetitive, even if you speak about repetition, yeah. Uh, but it's, it, it's, it's a unique event where somebody personally exposes herself and then leaves these uh, artifacts. And then I contacted Elan and said, if I couldn't enter, uh, it would be great to see you. And she said, yes, I have a, an appointment with a curator from New York, why don't you go? And so I came here yeah, and this uh, guy was here and they were talking and then choo -choo -choo, America has postcards to sell. <laughs> they are numbered and each one is from the euros. Right? And so I thought, whoa, yes, uh, the, this is professional, professional artist. This is a, a profession, right? And so when we speak about art and when we, when we hear this historical context and that we have a gallerist here who, who takes care of this, uh, a, a professional, in my point of view, you can correct me, is when you live from what you are doing. And when you're an amateur, you live from something else and you're doing it for more or less fun, right? So how many artists then are actually professional, right? Who can purely live from their work? So they are pushed and forced into amateurism because they have to do a second job, a third job, and uh, so on. And uh, this is a, a difficult scenario because, you know, to the art, market where it evolved from was from beautiful paintings which are done by male artists in their studio you know and then put on the nice walls and being sold to wealthy people and here we are in the midst of Kreuzberg uh, you know in Berlin and there's no artwork no painting uh, this is a difficult position to be in Right? So um, we then started talking about the um, possibilities of what can she do and I, I might ask Martin here because he's her gallerist, are these works for sale? I mean, we didn't speak about this. Is, uh, are these artifacts for, for sale? Course, yeah, of course, yeah. And they are unique pieces? They are unique pieces, yeah. And uh, what is the price for this one, for example? It's, uh, you can buy it piece by piece. Oh, oh, this is a mirror. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a mirror. So you buy each yeah, mirror. Yes, the smaller, the smaller ones are about uh, 150 euros, and the bigger, uh, about a bit, uh, bit more expensive. The prices are everywhere here. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm presenting this. Uh, I mean, uh, this scenario. Okay, okay. I know. I, so this is what I make me feel a little bit uncomfortable because we were speaking here about the intentions why we do this yeah. and about this. Uh, Historical value of what she is doing. Of course, yeah, and yeah. now I come and ask, how much is the mirror? And this, you know, this brutal question of how much is it? How do you sell it? This destroys a lot of the preciousness of this artwork. And how do we balance this out, right? How do you, how do we make it precious and not, you know, cheap? How, you know, how, how, do, how, how do we do it that, that what she is doing to her body, what she is doing with her life? The expression, how do we turn this into a living? And I think this is a question that is still unanswered in the uh, art world. And um, we had in preparation a discussion about this, and I, my point was that the, the price of art is a social price. So it's the ability of the artists or the gallerists or both of them to reach out to very rich people. So this morning I read a short article uh, in the news that it's Damien Hirst uh, has a decorated a hotel room in um, Las Vegas. Yeah. It's a hundred thousand and nine dollars. Okay, you could decorate a uh, hotel suite in Las Vegas too with your beautiful mirrors. And <laughs> So what is actually, right, so why, I mean, how much are the pillows? Can I ask this question? The 
plus or for, for, for one five? 1,500, yeah. Each pillow. Each pillow. This is nothing. I mean, this is uh, yeah, compared to a night in this Las Vegas hotel or art from Damien Hurst. So, what is the difference? Right? So, what is. Uh, mm. And how can we solve this problem? How many artists have the ability or the, the possibility even to enter these social spheres? And is the social price the right price for an artwork? And does this price then say anything? So, does these 150 euros for a mirror. How are they related to you, to the to, to this historical context? What you do beautifully. How are this? Said, how is 150 euros related? What we said yesterday. Mm -hmm. you remember, we said that sometimes collectors they don't even have the sensation to buy art if it's too cheap. They they they, were, they really want to have something which is precious. But how we relate it? I think pushing and and letting understand and and not damaging or jeopardizing the integrity of the artist or the conceivement of the artwork, but pushing on the preciousness of the moment, on what has happened for this mirror to be created, why this mirror is cut like this or like that, why they have different measurements, why it's not possible for you, it's less beautiful, it's not really right to have one of them, for example because they are just a piece of the armor she put on herself. They are just a piece of the food. Hey, you so have to know the whole story. That's the point, that's the point. That's, that's yeah. the, the, yeah. the idea through which one can <coughs> make the preciousness of the whole body of work. Right, so how many mirrors are these? 66. 66 well, times 150. 66. If I want to have this artwork, you know, this... Yeah. Yeah, so what would be the art box in total? If I would like to have, I mean, this is easy, this is 4,500. Yeah. yeah, and so how many people here in the audience are able to buy this? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is what I'm, I'm thinking, so these, these postcards Ilana sold to me, I could afford this easily, right? So I could say, no problem, Ilana, just buy it, right? So everybody of you could afford 20 euros. Just for the available in the office. Yeah, <laughs> no, then this is 100 times 20. This is 2000 yes. for an evening. I don't know how much a musician charges, and I think these things uh, we should they are always put, put away there because we are in the art world, you know, we are connoisseurs, we think about the content, but we don't think about our living and our self value, our self esteem, and you know, that we can live like a normal person. And I think this is something that she put up, she puts on the table right away. I march in, poof, mark here, and I think this is a good approach because. This, uh, for me, this tells a lot of about her seriousness about doing this, right? Yeah. And then we had this discussion here, and I said, there's a lot of things turning in the art market, in my point of view. We, in my point of view, we are in a situation, we have been, or not we, but the art world has been 150 years ago, when photography was invented. So when before photography was invented, the academic painter, they, yeah, were, portrait, portrait, portrait. Yeah, they, they were, in, in, in the end, they were living for machines, from, from, from machines, right? yeah. So, they were copying something, they were, you know, pushing, with the rainy songs, they had the, the knowledge about, you know, light and pushing it against the wall, and then, you know, And you can see also the fight when the photography was invented, so the painters tried to be more perfect, they make it in color, because the first photography was black and white, so the painters tried to make it crazy exact, you know, and make it in color, and they fight against the photography, but then, then exactly, it's a the question, and then they have to change, yes. to change the, the, yeah, the impact. Yeah, they, they, lost their, they lost their jobs. In the studios, the photographers went. So the photographers started making photos in Paris. The younger artists went to plein air. They took another new invention they used, the train, and drove outside. And then, you know, everything happened as we know. We, it's happened to, uh, to be that, 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 that there has been a market evolved about competing styles, like uh, like skateboarders say, you know, I can do this move, you can do this move, and the people looked at this, and then this uh, aesthetic more evolved, and it was around these artifacts that the artists created. <coughs> if it was an art painting, photography, or documentary of a, a land art piece, or whatever. So the artists, like Alana, created artifacts. 
I think that we are in a, in a situation right now with um, social media and the internet that um, is puts the same threat on the traditional art market as photography has done back in the uh, 19th century. Meaning that um, a certain amateurism comes into place where actually anybody can produce videos, anybody can produce stuff and uh, put it on Instagram. Cut it immediately on the iPhone. Yes, we had this, this, this whole thing. And uh, so, I'm thinking here, when we speak about uh, an artist like El Elana who does work out of, you know, out of her body, out of her of herself, and she's not mimicking these painting stuff, you're not there to try to make a beautiful painting. This is already a step in my, in my point of view in the right direction, yes? And we uh, have to think about what is charging her up. So I would have uh, uh, loved to see that uh, all the fingers go up. This is a kind of bouncy effect, as I would say, yeah. that, that you create a hype through if you want a stunt, that you do things people get interested in and that you do the opposite instead of um, making it uh, rare, making it available so that lots of people can see it and interact with it. I mean, we had this discussion and uh, maybe you can reflect on that because you yeah. know that this will come. Uh, or the gallerist, maybe, what do you think? How do you, will, will you deal with this? Um, yes, but yeah, I mean, you were telling me yesterday about this idea of making uh, like video material actually very readily available, but in different uh, qualities. Uh, yeah. And this I find interesting, you know, because then it could be something precious of, of a certain edition. Um, there's, yeah, when there's a limited edition, then there's only a certain quality available, and then this one you can have with a special certificate and so forth. Yeah. But apart from that, in order to spread the information to have visibility, um, to have it in lower qualities. This is, yeah, this is kind of interesting. Um, but then about the topic of uh, repeating performances and, um, and also about charging for performances, this is something where I just, um, you know, for me, uh, what, what distinguishes performance art from the performing arts is exactly that it goes against, for me it fundamentally must go against these conventions of the performing arts. That there is something repeated, you know, that because then it becomes a theater. There's yeah. a choreography that is repeated, there's a script that is repeated, there is whatever, whatever, yeah. Rehearsed, um, uh, re-performed, and there's a stage, there is a ticket, an audience that buys a ticket, there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end, there's a clapping at the end, you know, and, and so forth. Like, it's very important for me that people have the freedom in performances to come and to go, <coughs> and to interact in different ways, and, and that they don't buy a ticket, unfortunately. You know, it's somehow it's important for me, for the integrity of my work, this is how I feel about it, even though this is a bit absurd that, you know, you pay to buy a drink at the bar, but the artist is for free, you know? <laughs> 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 it, it is absurd, but somehow I, 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 I do, um, I believe that this is kind of fundamental to the medium. But the psychology of the audience changes, and the moment yeah. in which somebody pays a ticket, it's because something is being given. There, there is there is a show, there is something, they want to be amused because they pay. So your mind works like this. When yeah. the audience, the public doesn't pay, it is there in a way more open. It doesn't expect necessarily something. Maybe it's, so it's more open. It's more, it's, yeah. more, it's, it's more open to, to see what is happening. And there is exactly the bridge in which mm -hmm. the performing act goes. In a moment in which the walls goes down, the, 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 the protection goes down because, all right, I'm here, I came to see this performance, maybe I don't really know exactly about what is it. And so there is this sense of, like, what will happen? Like, will I be amused? Will I be disturbed? Will I be annoyed by that? And that's... That, that's and I'm a, often aiming to disturb and exactly. disrupt. And, but, exactly. But I think often, I, I think often these days that... Mm, 
that does happen with um, experimental exactly. theater, this sort of thing. But this, it's still, this happens, but it's different. Right. Yeah, there, there's maybe an expectation of uh, different of expectations. Something, but wouldn't be a solution to reconstruct yeah. because there has been a fragmentation from one, there were paintings. And then there is there has been this fragmentation in which then came photography, mm -hmm. except what you spoke about. And then there is this fragmentation again that is acting through social media, uh, Instagram, and so forth. And how about to reconstruct the, the preciousness and the importance of the outcomes of a performance mm -hmm. by by really trying to market? I, I know you don't like this term, but marketing. To Market it as you did with the poster, yeah, I think, I think finding different solutions. Well, question, uh, I think more because we are telling about self influence and so on, so on, and so on. Okay, it's a definition of painting, sculpture is very simple. Uh, everybody knows what it what, what, what yeah. is buying, uh, it's very easy. Um, but I think in, in, in performance art, it's more about how to bring it to the people, you exactly. know, because. Um, uh, when you bring something to, to people, then um, LMS is interesting for the people with the performance. It can be a unique the performance, but I think the question in performance is not so easy, I think. Um, I don't know nobody who, who, who answered this question like, uh, yeah. And what do you think? I think we talked also yesterday a, a bit um, about this, that the important thing is to bring it. You have, to, uh, you have to have a good documentation, you have to have a good photography. Yeah. You have to bring it also to put it in the media. We, we, we spoke about pitching. We are pitching. pitching. Yeah. So I had the analogy of, um, of Elana being a startup, right? And uh, you, the audience or the collector, being the investors. So what, what you do or what is, what is tend to happen these days is that uh, in the past museums where, you know, where they are to keep the heritage, to collect and preserve. Nowadays we see the um, uh, eruption nearly of private museums and the uh, owners of private museums have a different approach. They buy uh, undone artworks, they buy artworks that are not existing. So they invest in the artists, they commission the artists, they give the artists space to work. They don't know what the artists will do. So it's a completely different approach, it's a more dynamic approach. So this is why what I also try to speak here about. One thing is about it preserves the pressureness to have a, a kind of site where you have a memory, or so it's like a you know, it's like a shrine. Ah yeah, this reminds me um, of Elana and of her work, of the performance I've been. And the other approach is to say, she's a great woman, she does great stuff, she really delivers for society, it's important that this message is carried out, we fund her. Yeah. We fund her that she can do her work. So, and then this is not a problem of being, you know, that we don't even have to think about how much is this, because I think it's embarrassing me asking this question, how, how I think it's, it's I think it's, yeah. I, I don't really think yeah. it's, I don't really feel, well, you know, because it's, it, it, it's, as you said, puts some kind of disgrace to somebody or when you put a price on something, you have a certain... You so have you feel that the that performance art in, uh, in the market should rather be by the commission works rather than... It's like, I think, uh, he, we, we, we said also yesterday that it would be kind of investing in the stock market. Like, I believe in these artists. There is something there. Yeah. So, therefore, I'm asking a site specific. You have to know the artist, you have to know his work, you have to know the artist, you have to know yeah, the artist, you have to know everything. And so it's a kind of also very intellectual kind but then, of but then collective we come back, thing. But then we, we, come back, we, oh, sorry, we, we come back to the exposure of the artist and to having this director of museums or foundation to commission this work to the artist to, so to invest in this title on the stock market. Mm -hmm. So that there is how the artists, they, they can reach this point, how they can be asked to, to do that. Yeah, as, as, as we spoke about this, when, when I see, for example, these video productions, yeah, especially this one in uh, Serbia, yeah. this was probably cheap. I mean, you travel costs, uh, Sound editing, you know, you had three cameramen. Okay. Maybe everybody, you know, did it. Uh, 
but no, normally, no, normally you have to hire professionals and uh, not make it. No, my own fundraising. See, here we yes. go. Right, so, so well, what I suggest as a, as a, uh, you know, as a way out is to, um, to be, to become not a collector, to become a producer, right? That you, that you come out and say, hey, I would like to make this video in Serbia. What is really, I mean, especially for me as a German, this is out of industry and the way to kill people. This is just, wow, nobody speaks about this. And uh, this is a very, 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 very bad story, right? And this is a story that needs to be, you know, the need, the, that people pick it up and not in a stupid uh, TV production. So you live that, right? You live mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it's that. not yeah. implementation. It's, 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 not, it's not just from somebody who, you know, who just does it. It's somebody who lives it. And, uh, and this, then the message carries a completely different meaning, right? As, as you pointed out, this is a real strong message. So when you attach a price to that, this is difficult. But what you could, could say, you could say, hey, well, we would like to produce this video, I need 100,000 euros, and uh, you can have a copy of it, full stop. And then uh, each investor, when they put in, I don't know, 1,000 or 10,000, can, yeah. can, can pay that for it, and then they can have the original high quality, and the rest will be proliferated on YouTube, where? Yeah, so that you can speak out to the world, that everybody who's coming knows you already from your uh, last YouTube stunt. Mm -hmm. In social media, and so um, I think that the, we have to, um, and this would also give the chance, in my point of view, to for every student, you know, to participate on uh, Elana's work, because there might be a way that I can, you know, put in ten euros into a production and be part of it, like having a share yeah, of this. It doesn't mean need to be crowdfunding. It's uh, yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's not my job. It's his job, right, to set this up. Uh, I don't know how he would do it, but you could, you know, you could ask people, students or so, um, to pitch your project, and you have here somebody you know, on your side who could, be, you know, who could give the whole story a real meaning, and it shouldn't be uh, difficult, in my point of view. This would, my suggest, would be my suggestion here. I don't think you're right, because I, you know, on the end, um, it's also a new experience for me. I, I, I work with Elana two and a half years together, and I don't have other performance artists, I'm not a performance art gallery. Um, so um, I also have to think a lot uh, how to how to promote her, how to make uh, yeah sittings like here. Um, and because I think that performance art have um, a big berechtigung, it's a very important part in the contemporary art in the 60, in the 60, in the 60s, 70s, and this time it was also contemporary art. And it, yeah. it had a very big function in, in the art world. Um, yeah, you know it, Colette, for example. Um, a great, great performance artist also. Um, and, and we can also, after, um, make some questions if you, if you like or, or discuss together. And that's why I think you cannot ignore performance art just because uh, it's easy to sell paintings and sculptures. Of, of course, it's easier. Or it's much easier. But, um, you know... Um, but there's also a different value in it. It's Sorry. Exactly, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. A painting from Whiskey or so no. is beautiful, but uh, in relation to something like that, I mean, this is heavy stuff. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's why I'm interested in this, because mm -hmm. I, I see this important role in, in, in performed art. Yeah. And, and, and more and more of this, it's cool. Yeah. And, 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 mm -hmm. okay. Think about the white horse from Mariana Abramovic, or Mariana Abramovic and Ula, this video where they give themselves, you know, slap themselves for hours. Yeah. These things are in the public mind, right? Exactly. Oh, so yeah. these are icons, this white horse with the flag. Yeah, but it, it doesn't translate to financially surviving. I not that I wanted to say okay, that I wanted to say is, um, is that I would, um, that, okay, it, ha it happens very naturally, it, it, organically, since quite a few years, that from my performances, the objects result from them. I would never, ever conceptualize a performance with that in mind. I don't, I don't ever, I never, you <laughs> know, I cannot emphasize that. Yeah, like the last performance, and last so, year you make here, was, uh, yeah. it, was, uh, it was a beautiful performance, it was in this part of the gallery, when Alana goes under a uh, bed. Yeah, it was wood that yeah. sort of visually referenced a bed, and 
Yes, and with this there was not a result, there was not an object resulting from exactly. two periods yeah. they did. But people have uh, remember this before it until today, it's crazy, you know, when they came yeah. here, okay, they blocked my Facebook account for two weeks because of, uh, I was, no, no, for 25 seconds was standing naked, and I make um, I make it on live Facebook and then block my account because of child pornography. Child pornography. I get a letter from them already. You know, I'm going to make these select all your photos. <laughs> so uh, it was a good sample. Why? Uh, yeah. Why I uh, want to push it? <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, with the with the with the works that do result in objects, because that one in particular, I know that it was people found it powerful. But, but no, it didn't result in something later to be exhibited or yeah. potentially sold. But other performances do, and when this happens, but we have it's, not, today. it's not any, okay, yeah. so we can keep it in mind, but it's not anything premeditated um, for me. And I, I feel these objects to be, um, yes, very precious, as you said, and I would really like them to continue to have a life to be exhibited, you know, to, 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 to create a yeah, collection. And yeah, and you, yes, Why don't you do the performance again? I mean, because then it becomes a choreography that is repeated. It becomes theatrical because for me, there's the, the immediacy of do, of the need to do it at that this moment. Discussion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, there's an urgency and an immediacy with which I create my work. You know, but this is planned. The pinnos have been planned. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you have to go to buy the pinnos, the irons, right? Yeah. You have to make when you do it, and then in this limit, you have this particular feeling. The main yeah. issue you yeah. mentioned is Marlene Abramovich. This is yeah. a question. Because she made now a, a reactment, yeah? Yeah. And this is exactly in the middle of your discussions. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, because she uh, really questions what does it perform, how much cost, yeah? Yeah. And Marina Abramovich starts like it's a uh, really a radical artist. Yeah. What she did it now, they start to make reactment and sell. Yeah? Yes. This is it's how it's uh, performance uh, uh, put it's now. Yeah? Yeah. And of course, it's uh, your positions. Uh, for me, it's more close, you know, because it's, you don't want to repeat, because if you make repetitions, you're moving to market. Yeah. I, my position is it's uh, performance artists should be somehow keep it distance with uh, like artist positions and market. If you start to think how much cost mirror, how do it, this is for me it's not correct. It's question. not the first question. Yeah. Well, it's not the first question. Yeah. How much but but any case, yeah. it's, for me somehow of course we cannot jumping from market. This is illusions. Yeah. But in any case, you have to really keep your positions without thinking about market and how you have to present to sell that. Yeah, know? yeah, 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 absolutely. And but this even is, this regardless yeah, of market. This is a, it's a, that's a very important point. Yeah, you know, I know. Special I today, because absolutely. everything's now, you cannot do nothing if you're not thinking how to sell, you know? Yeah, Many absolutely. Many artists, for instance, Dita Konchik, he's mm -hmm. canceled the repetition, the reenactment. I think so, Marina Abramovich asked him, to make oh. it so, or something like that, and, and, she, and he cancelled because he says this is I did it one time, mm -hmm. and this is what belongs to history, and this is that's all. This is positions. If we will be not keep positions like that in art historian, we really to disappear in market. Yes. Yeah. 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 But on the other hand, she, we have to uh, make a living as artists, right? But this is another question. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know I, came, I came from uh, Moscow, yeah, before mm -hmm. Perestroika time. We have no institutions, no galleries, no collectors, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm working in a publishing house, made book, book design. You know, all my friends, are maybe from, you know, Kabako or another, yeah. they make book illustrations, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. And we got money from uh, in other directions, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we organized exhibitions, uh, free gate exhibitions, like I did it now in, in Berlin, yeah? But in any case, uh, we organize ourselves. This is position in, uh, of active artists. Now we lost these positions. I'm sure that every artist has to take more, be more active and create something around net. Not only be uh, ask uh, galleries, curators, or professional from market. This is this diffusion is very bad for artists. I feel artists say no. Mm -hmm. Then they say more no 
that's when you want a more clear border between market and contemporary art. But of course, um, it's, um, it's, I think it's changed so quickly. I remember when I visited the first Uli Hund Gänger, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 15 years, 20 years ago, and uh, I visited some artists, some classes, and when, when I asked them something about the work, they never tell me the price because they don't know. And they just describe me the work, they're talking about the works, and sometimes when somebody wants to have something for 50 euro or for 20 euro, then I, I remember it until today, uh, they go and buy some boxes of beer and sell them. Uh, today the Rundgang and the UDK works like this, that uh, the first what they have is a price list uh, in the second semester. It, it also shocked me a bit. You know, because I, I, I just want to first ask well, what, what's going on with this work, what, what technique is this, or uh, what's the intention, and, and I think every, everywhere are a price list. Or, yeah, or the work, it has changed quite this quickly, week. it's, it's irritating me a bit. You, know. you have to look at the blue in line with this came in 1917. This is, please, please look, you understand how you far from contemporary art, you know? What's every we see it here? Blue ring line, yeah, it's Marina Abramovich on, okay. on the cover with snake. And you can see how is big gap now between normal art, I would say it's creative uh, uh, art which is possible to compare with art in the 1560s. And what happens now? It's really, it's not my cup of tea anymore. It's like Kadeve, <laughs> you know, or something like that. I'm not interested in even, even uh, listen or talk because they not speak about works which is less than cost less than ten millions of dollars. You know. But yeah, but I think in the past it was the same. No. I think guys like Rubens so they're working with twenty of assistants and they pay them. They have to earn to pay them. So you have to compare you know, even with galleries. It's never. It's just you never get that. Let's, let's you know. Uh, Men, men talk so much okay. all the time. Sorry for, <laughs> for voicing this. Uh -huh. Please let me know. Yeah, yeah. something. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks. No, thanks. But I think that it really can be coming from the fact that there's such a huge amount of exploitation. And actually, Malik, when you came to buy my postcard, you were speaking about this. Um, the way that even I mean, institutions are exploiting art, because the artist, the, the, the artist has the need to produce, has the need to be creative, you know, and that um, this is being, the shit is being exploited out of artists because of this. And it's happening also all of these, all the time, I mean, artists are working with museums, I mean, places that really do have money and expect it to pay for everything themselves. It's kind of, totally you have to bring in the topic of survival. And Marina Abramovich, I worked with her in 2010. I was one of her lead performers at MoMA um, in her retrospective, you know. And uh, they wanted to pay us like shit for for this for re-performing her works every every well not everybody did every day, but I did every day because I moved there only for this job um, during the opening hours of the museum, six days per week until many of the re-performers were losing consciousness and ending up in the hospital. And they realized, ah, this is actually difficult work. And then they changed everything about how they would pay us, you know? Because there's so little respect for what is actually done, for what we do as artists. There and no there's, so, there's no perception and there's yeah. so much exploitation. And I'm fucking exhausted of like, working as an artist like this. And so, you know, like, uh, I don't consider it to be um, necessarily like um, if it was happening at Uday uh, for people to be judged too harshly for it. I've just mentioned it. You know, know because, you know, yeah, it really is. It's time for people to wake up and uh, realize the reality. Yeah, but I also want to put it in a voice for the younger artists today, that even these artists at Uday Kaur come up with the uh, answer to your thing, with the price list. It's it's because we live in a neoliberal time, right? I think back in the days in the 60s and 70s, I was involved in house courting, and you know, we've been all kind of together and shared everything back in the days when we courted here in Kreuzberg. This is different now. When the kids now uh, have to pay, I don't know, 800 euros for a very, very small flat. Everything relates to money these days. So every interaction with others is 
through money. It's, uh, I think this, this spirit from the 60s, 70s, we were talking about, it's a little bit lost, that these kids today have to have money to have some kind of freedom. Because it's, it's not that you can have friends that you know, invite you, that you can you know, tramp in, like put your finger out. Now you have to, take, you have to pay for everything. Yeah, and uh, so I think that uh, money is these days, because of the, how society change has played a different role. And, and therefore, also forces artists to it's forced them, to take forces it. them to, yeah. to to acknowledge this fact, yeah, and to deal with it. In my point of view, and I don't, I think you are right with what you are saying. This is this is the, the, the point which all should aim to. But the question is, this is is this available for young kids these days? Or I quite, I doubt this. To be honest, I think it's. Uh, you know, I also like, kind of want to say that like. I mean, I'm not from ASEAN, but like from film scene, it's always the same that like, if you want to stay true, and you kind of say no, but there will always be someone who would betray. So like, you know, like, if you don't want to do like three projects, but there will always be someone who can sacrifice his life for like, to work with cool artists or something. So it's just because there are lost so many competitions right now, way too much, that like, you can stay true, you can still be like really focused on the art base and not too much on the marketing side, but there will always be someone who just take things from you. And it has a, I have a feeling that like if we really want to protect ourselves, we need to do solidarity, but also in the end it doesn't work. Because also a lot of us like, yeah, like why should I be solidarity with you? I have to pay my own rent, you don't pay my rent. So it's just this kind of very separated world that we live in right now. And I think like we just really need to find our own solution. That's my feeling. A way not yeah. losing integrity, yeah. but still yeah. you place yourself. It, it's, it's horrible to say, place yourself in the market and live out of it, which is something we were speaking about yesterday. No, yeah. when you were telling me that a lot of artists, there is no no content behind, there is no work behind, there is no studies behind. Okay, it's also the point that brings to the production of the work. Everybody can be an artist today, you know, like uh, try to be or try to want, try to want to be an artist, maybe like this. Um, and and yeah, and, and and I think also that um, okay, now we are in a different. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think the important point would be like not to lose the integrity. Yeah, that's no, always it's always tough. keeping an eye. So without losing the integrity and still sticking to a harness it to yourself, mm -hmm. but still thinking about ways, as the famous postcard, to, yeah. to, to yeah. walk around. And I and I have to say that it's I mean it's uh, the first time that I'm represented by a gallery, and I know that I know that it's like a um, a risk for a gallerist to take actually to work with a performance artist because it's not. Integrated in the art market, and okay. you know, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, but I mean, I, I just have to say that I don't feel like anything is compromised. Anything that I do here is compromised, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't agree to do it if, if it would be. Yeah, we talk so often together. Um, exactly. Before, before the exhibition, before the exhibition, the performance, I, I, I don't have so long discussions with uh, other artists. So, so of course, I, I always have long discussions with, with, with my artists, but um, with, with Alana, it's a special kind of discussions because, yeah, how to, yeah, very simple, how to make a price for a unique video. I don't feel like entering the market, uh, like, you, I don't know, as you were saying, if I understood correctly, that entering the market is a split from integrity somehow, because I do feel as though um, if there, there are collect collections. No, we lost like, our freedom, I would like to say, yeah. in basic things, you know, especially young people, you know. 
Okay. Yeah, how are you going to live if you don't yeah, sell? Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, sorry. I mean, how are you going to live as an artist if you don't sell anything? Yeah, you can work and find another job. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, work eight hours, then go home, I like, work for a couple hours. But, like, I mean, how the fuck you, I mean, sure. I mean, uh, it's, it's true. Uh, 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 only I'm sorry. I'm I know a lot of artists say they have an extra job to, 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 to produce, uh, take all the world, so especially when, when, when they are young. Yeah, but imagine a doctor, right? A doctor uh, uh, doing surgery has to have a second job at Burger King or something and then goes and makes a surgery. You don't want that, right? You know, uh, or a lawyer uh, having a different job. Uh, you want people to be focused on what they do. So uh, exactly. we want you to concentrate on your work. I mean, you have to do lots of research to find about these things. Uh, I asked you, how, where the hell do you find this information from? I mean, this, uh, this takes a lot of time to do that, and so uh, I think we as a society should think about ways, and you as a gallerist especially should also think about ways, what new ways to adapt to this uh, changing uh, environment. Exactly, it's uh, all time with the mind of here. Yes, and, and, and uh, uh, I, I understand that, and I don't want to you know, go too hard for this, but I think we have to find new ways New ways of, uh, of giving back uh, integrity to the artists, to give them freedom to work, and uh, not letting them have a second or third or fifth job, right? Yeah, let me, let me say that. Yeah. If, if an artist has not lived, mm -hmm. if an artist has not lived, and lived implies all kinds of different things that can, they can be confronted with in life, then their art is probably not very interesting. If there are exceptions. Yeah. But life, you know, without life, there is no art. So without, and then most artists, writers, have had horrible jobs, had awful things, and still they've created good work, great work. It, you know, you don't need one, you don't, it, you don't have to live in a vacuum to be an artist. I don't have to, you know. You have to suffer. You do have to suffer. In a sense, you do have to suffer. And most of them have. Most there are a lot of Bohemian artists, rich people, in the, you know, this, all these plein air artists from French, Matisse or whatever, Monet, they were all rich. I don't, know, sure. I don't know all the details, but I mean, I know yeah. enough, of, enough of artists and enough of writers have, you know, taken all kinds of stupid jobs and have gone for years and years and years, and they still did their work. I mean, you know. But I give you two, it's, it's not, you know, when you have financial success, it don't means that you are a good artist, okay? So it's completely uh, two different things. Uh, I think for uh, for be uh, successful, you have to be good. But uh, there are a lot of artists. They don't. They, they are not uh, going this commercial way. They for for them, they are more important to make museum shows, and, and Kunstvereine, and they are so focused on the works, and they make the works brilliant. I, and nobody said something something different. But um, yeah. I think artists have to have to try uh, by themselves, also with the help of the, with the help of the gallery, and maybe of, of the government also. You know that that, that they also have to um, um, make more budget. But I think the best way, on the end, the optimum optimum way is to to yes make this intellectual part like museum shows and also the commercial time. You have to have both a bit. Are I we, think it's optimum. Are we forgetting what's? I mean. There's an unknown. The unknown is the artists themselves. The artists themselves, they don't even know half the time what's going on. To find out, they begin to create the art. There's this unknown that goes back all the way to violence, childhood, you name it. And no artist will sacrifice that unknown in themselves. No artist, real artist, I don't think, will agree to all this stuff about, uh, you know, prices and all this other stuff. There's that unknown in that person, and that's what's coming out of that, is the art, the writing, and that's the integrity. Whether or not they sell or not, or whether or not they have a second job, parking cars, or uh, washing dishes, yes, it's irrelevant. It's really irrelevant. Or whether or not they make it uh, financially irrelevant to that person. It, Deep down in this unknown part of that person's psyche, it's irrelevant. That's my feeling. Yeah, but maybe when you want to bring, I don't know. I, 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 I think the same. I mean, I think that an artist is an artist, and I think yeah. this has nothing to do with your personal wealth. I don't. I don't believe in that. I. I 
uh, personal wealth gives you a certain, you know, comfort if you want to, to certain freedom to do things. But this doesn't change you when you are an artist. I don't think if you have, if if if, if Ilana would be a billionaire, do you think she would stop making art? I don't think so. Would you? No, absolutely. It has nothing to do with. Uh, yeah, it's the. Um you would keep on going. I mean, what else would you want? Yeah, there's the need. There's simply the need that this is what's exploited. Because yeah, for my life, I think so too. This is, like, this is what I'm saying. There's a the urge, as you said, there's a fire the burning the inside to make art. Exactly. Right? And this really is what you describe as well. Yeah. This has nothing to do with how much money we're going to get. And I think we have also samples whose artists they have uh, the big careers and the, I think. Uh, the 90s, the middle of the 90s, and they take a big breakdown because of the crisis. And they have to lose all assistance. I know a lot of artists, they, they uh, uh, yeah, sell the flats, sell the cars, but they continue the art. So I think, uh, I, yeah, and, and it, it, yeah, it, it has kind of respect, or I don't know, respect is the wrong word, but I think when somebody makes art, it's not the kind of money. There are a lot of people, they have had a lot of money, then the market goes down, and they continue to work. It's a smaller thing, but continue to say. Buster Keaton. Buster Keaton. Hmm? Buster Keaton. <laughs> 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 Not a performance <laughs> artist. Wait a minute. Sure he was. Okay. <laughs> I think, I, think um, I mean, for an artist, it's, it's existential to, to make art, to produce art, to do something, to, to turn themselves into whatever they do. Um, but I think at the same time, as, as soon as um, it's, it's a necessity to, to exist, it's an existential necessity yeah, to, to make art, but at the same time, it is a ne ne necess necessity to, to be able to exist in order to, to, yes. to follow. Yes, yeah, but on the end, I think it's also much better yes. Uh, when Alana can buy a new beamer, you know, yeah, yeah, or, something, or uh, can uh, buy a new monitor, I feel better yeah. with this, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> when I say, oh, yeah. yeah. something from artists, or 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 something from Celebrate the, the necessity of the artist to suffer. And the thing is, the artist no, is not to really celebrate the thing. Just, 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 I think that as well when we start this uh, thing, um, it is, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's sometimes, yes, yeah, it's important. I think it's an important question, but sometimes it's not, not so comfortable, uh, of course, the question. Because Absolutely. it's always, yeah, we have, well, to discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> We should have left the market away. It would have been a wonderful thing. Yeah, but that's the I don't know about this. Seriously, I've been around decades, okay? Yeah. And who did it? Well, I can go for two weeks already to start. No, I'm not going to talk so much. but. One thing I will tell you, every decade I've witnessed, it's so interesting, the changes, you know, and then when you look back, I don't want to say how many decades, and we have a conversation about the show and the market comes up, this would never happen in the 70s. Of That's also so very interesting, and the social media. Not that it's not an issue, but it would never come up when you're trying to figure out what the artist is doing. I know, and I feel really bad in the role to be honest. You know, you are a fantastic group of people to speak about it, actually. A gallery is representing a performance artist, a curator and art dealer. And you are like the expert of the statistics of the art market and There's a number of all of the oh, well, and like, so it's like, you know it's really like an interesting yeah I'm not judging it I'm just saying it's so interesting how it changes yeah yeah, yes. yeah. so you know what we do we do number crunching on uh, exhibitions so we give mm -hmm. we, with an algorithm like Google Page Rank we assign points to each exhibition this one for example. Right, it's like an alternative currency if you want. So I see this in a way, and I'm very sorry to say this, that there is a kind of uh, death to connoisseurship and a death to criticism. The, the criticism is what we do with numbers, 
the numbers go up, the chart, or the chart goes down. And this is the modern way of criticizing an art work or an artist's career. This is in the times we are living in. Everything is quantified, right? Every relation between us is quantified. And which and one are the criteria for this, uh, for this number to go up and down? It's a, it's a network. Okay. It's a network scenario like Google PageRank. It says how many pages link to a certain site. Okay. It's like a quotation index in the science world. How many times is your article quoted as a scientist? How many institutions? Yes, this is the same thing. Like how many shows did you give? How many times are the so it shows the quotation. And we measure this. And it gives them a value, right? And uh, this could be, you know, this wouldn't have this would happen in the 70s, that's what, that's 60s, what nobody would have ever think about that. Uh -huh. yeah. Everything changes. But since we are living in computerized, digitized time, right? Everything is digital. Every kind of relation is binary. Yeah, and so we have to deal with that. It's a fact. It's like yeah. photography back in the days. It's it's a technology that has overcome us yeah, right? and changes the world dramatically. There will be millions of people losing their job. There will be countless artists which have no value because there's zero collectors for this. Yeah, because the people are moving, they sit in the airplanes, they don't collect anymore. When you go up here and uh, visit uh, the, 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 the lofts of the startup millionaires, you see design furniture, vintage car, no art. No, you don't see art. It's gone. So when you ask them, these people, art will look at this. This is kitsch, yeah, as no art. Art has content. They don't know. Right, so that we need to, in my point of view, as artists, as, as art historians, as galleries, connect to to the new to the to the, to the, to the new world. If you want. We need to find a language to communicate with people. One form is through number crunching, to statistics. It's a way to try and I'm trying to do that. Right, and there are maybe thousands of other forms, but I'm thinking, and this is why Inanna probably gladly invited me. We have to take the situation serious and we have to deal with it. This is all I was wanted to say. I didn't want to spoil what she's doing, right? And why, when I asked how much is this, you know, I didn't want to destroy that, but I wanted to just put my finger into the bleeding wound, you know, and... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I know that. I know that. And, but it, like, I, it, was, it was good, right? It's not, it's not because... You know, I, I, I like also, I, I like thinking back of the back in the days how Berlin and how Kreuzberg was. I like to see, I think there was, has also been bad. Yeah. So it's not only about thinking bad, and if you say it changes and we have to adapt, we can be sure it's going to change again. So there are certain mm -hmm. space for like utopian ideas because who knows what's coming next, you know? So you Yes, that's why yeah. I think also that uh, it's not true, to, for example, that, that the past was better and now it's everything shit, you know, I, uh, I think it's, um, I think also artists have so many chances with the multimedia today, with the new printing versions, you know, it was not possible for somebody 20 years ago to print a book, yeah. you know, what to do, now you, when you sit, you write it, put some pictures in, you're running to viewing the book, and you have for 250 euro a catalog, you know, and I think it helps a lot if, if you use it or you try to use it. Mm -hmm. Of course, not everything is necessary, maybe, you know, so, uh, yeah, uh, all of us or most of us are on Instagram, it's good for communication. It's very good for communication. But sometimes uh, we, when we start the discussion, what is the, the, the whole art on, 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 on Instagram is not so interesting. Yeah, how will you transform on Instagram what's going on here? Yeah, we have how will you get to use this? this, 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 this there's no way of communicating what, what, what Ilana does on Instagram, in my point of view. There is an Instagramable moment in it, of course, here and there, but it's, 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 it's just a, it's not even a tiny reflection. But and this is what where the, where the artists try to, you know, you try to create Instagramable. When you speak to architects, right, architects who build museums, yeah, we have to put it to account an Instagrammable moment. Fuck that, I mean, but this is a reality. Yeah, this is all, it's, 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 uh, we have to deal with this, I think, in my point of view. This is why I think this art form is, uh, is, a, is a good chance, it's a very good chance, because there's no way that you become an Instagram artist to, you know, maybe create Instagrammable moments, uh, but 
this art form by itself is not reproducible in a, a, a like an yeah. iron for example. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 statement actually that there's no like actual art on Instagram because you're just like that's a big statement for a platform that hosts like millions of people with Yeah, of course, but I mean, Instagram is a platform that hosts like video media with filters, but you can represent like. Of course, the platform itself is an art. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. so, um, thank you for viewing. <laughs> 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 thank you for viewing. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for viewing. Make some conversation now. The next one hour, maybe uh, you're welcome. You can take some beer or wine, and we stay here. I closed in one half hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>